everybody. Hi, I've got Georgie with us online. Uh, welcome everyone to the CDTA uh, board meeting. It's June 26, called the meeting to order. Uh, we have a quorum today. First item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of May 29th. We had an opportunity to review them. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Thank you, Mike. Second. Thank you, Jackie. Any uh, additions, subtractions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, minutes are approved. Uh, we'll move on to our recognitions. We have four of them yeah. today. First up is Belinda Corngay out of our Detroit Division. And Belinda is celebrating her 20th, uh, 20, 20 years in CDTA. Belinda was first working as a coordinator at a Dodge dealership in the area. Her husband had been working for CDTA for eight years, and she knew from attending CDTA functions with him that she had an interest in joining the team. So in 2004, she was hired as a temporary to fill in for a System 1 administrative assistant who was going on maternity leave, and the role ended up turning into a permanent position. Then, with our STAR service quickly growing, it was decided to separate STAR from System 1, and Belinda became our first STAR administrative assistant. At the time, STAR had about 2,000 clients in our customer base, and she says it's been incredible to see that service grow. After nine years in that role, Belinda was promoted to System 1 administrative assistant and headed off to the Troy Division. She says her favorite part of the job is the camaraderie in the division, she said that they are truly a family in Troy, and she enjoys being a problem solver and the first contact for operators and mechanics there. She said she also enjoys helping Superintendent Joe Landy so, she, so he can be successful in his role. When reflecting on her 20 years at CDTA, Belinda says she is proud to have been part of building the CDTA brand. She says CDTA is a powerful player in the community. We aren't just a bus company anymore, and the community reaches out to us to do so much more. In her spare time, Belinda is an avid cruiser. She just returned from a trip to Bermuda. Very nice. She also enjoys playing tennis, roller skating, swimming, spending time with her family, NASCAR, and getting ice cream at Curver Creek. <laughs> Belinda says retirement is on, our is on her radar, but she still has many more years to go, and we are glad to hear that. So congratulations on her. <laughs> is Mike Lash, who is celebrating 20 years, and he is one of our Troy Master Technicians. So Mike joined CBTA after serving in the Army National Guard following 9-11. First of all, thank you for your service, Mike. Mike knew he wanted to find a career using his mechanic and transportation skills, and that led Mike to join the CDTA team in June 2004 as a cleaner. Nine months later, he was promoted to a support tech role, and Mike became a technician in 2006 and a master technician in October of 2008. He bounced between the Troy garage and being a stockroom clerk in Albany for the next 10 years. He was always up for new experiences like working in the stockroom, but knew his skills were best utilized on our maintenance team. He's been at the Troy garage since 2018 and enjoys his colleagues there as well as his shift time. Over the years, the work-life balance, steady work, and great benefits have made his career enjoyable. Mike said the most important part of his job is knowing that he's responsible for helping to keep our buses in tip-top shape. He says, I know folks riding the bus, and I want them to be safe, and I ride the bus as well, so I want everyone to be safe who is riding. Upgrades to our facilities and equipment have made his job easier, and data is now a big driver for the direction of his work. Mike has won several safety awards and loves celebrating with coworkers at the annual dinner. In his spare time, he loves reading and going for walks, activity that is low impact and keeps him healthy. He says retirement is a few years away, but when it's here, he'd like to move out of the city and find something flexible and part-time to keep himself busy. But for now, he will continue to join us at CDTA, and congratulations on 20 years. Next 
next up is Mr. Wayne Rivers. <laughs> Wayne is celebrating 20 years and is one of our Troy operators. So Wayne came to us from Vermont Transit and White River Junction. He worked there for several years and then transferred to its subsidiary, Greyhound, here in Albany. Vermont Transit started making budget cuts and Wayne started looking elsewhere to continue his career. Wayne was living in Troy and he knew of CDTA because his neighbor, the late Bernard Fleischman, and who was an RPI professor who served on CDTA's board of directors. Cole Hammer. Cole Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I passed my house. <laughs> when Wayne joined CDTA, he started part time in STAR for about five months and then was looking for an opening in Troy to be a little bit closer to home. He moved to Troy and ended up on the extra list for about a year and drove every route in Troy. The 22, Troy to Empire Plaza, the old 80, which is now the 280, 87, 90, and more. Currently, Wayne operates Route 286 from Troy to RPI, Congress Park, Wine and Skill, Vander Heiden Hall, and back to Troy. He says, once you get the taste of driving and working in transit, it's in your blood and you can't escape it. It keeps him outdoors and getting to know our customers and community is rewarding. Wayne says fare collection and the technology on buses have advanced and are really efficient. The tokens and pass system have faded away, but the tokens were pretty neat. So. <laughs> Wayne loves the annual luncheons and gatherings with his colleagues to celebrate their successes. In his spare time, he loves taking care of his home. He also has a cabin in Averill Park. He also likes his staycations in countries of his ancestors, yeah. England, Scotland, and Australia. And as for retirement, he says it is a few years away that he doesn't have any plans just yet. So congratulations on 20 years, Thank you. Wayne. years as an Albany bus operator. Before joining CDTA, Mike worked for the state and decided he wanted to find a better opportunity for himself. He grew up in Albany and was a CDTA customer taking the bus to school every day. In 1999, Mike joined CDTA driving part-time for STAR. Three years later, he moved to fixed route and has been driving in Albany ever since. He currently drives Route 355, which runs between Colony and Schenectady. And prior to that, Mike drove routes in the city of Albany. He says his favorite part of the job is the driving, thankfully. He also <laughs> enjoys connecting with his customers. When looking back at his 25 years at CDTA, Mike says the biggest change he has seen is the quality of the buses. He loves driving Arctics, electric buses, and has also enjoyed piloting the new video mirrors. When he's not working, Mike enjoys playing music, going on car rides with his family, and getting ice cream together. He said that he's too young to retire and truly enjoys working at CDTA. He likes the flexible hours, stable work environment, and being able to provide for his family. He says that he has many more years ahead of him. Congratulations on 25 years. So that's about 100 years of service, and when I heard... Wayne talk about tokens um, for the last um, 40 years I've been carrying these around I update them every now and then they're my good luck charm so I say they're good. Yeah, they're good luck charm so <laughs> work pretty well for me um, but you know this if you if you listen by the way these these little vignettes are from the employees um, they're interviewed. Um, Emily did these interviews. So it's, it's really their words that Emily, reporter that she is, or still, uh, you know, she pretties it up a little bit, but it's basically their words. But if you listen, it's just, it's the history of the company. You, you, you kind of get the flair and where they came from, System 2 up the, in, 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 in Wayne's case, you know, Vermont train. Things of that nature. Mike, Mike was a bus rider you know, before he started here. So it, it, it really gives you sort of a, a really behind the scenes look at who we are and the people who do it. It's just, just interesting stuff. Thank you. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
We'll move on to uh, the next item on the agenda, which are the committee reports, and I'll kick it off with the Board Operations Committee. Uh, well, if we reviewed the agendas for uh, the June committee meetings and today's uh, board meeting, uh, Lisa Morello uh, joined us, gave us an update on the state legislature session that uh, wrapped up earlier this month. Uh, many bills were on the docket for discussion. Uh, as we've discussed uh, previously, uh, transit systems across the state did well with increases in state operating assistance, and we received an extra amount uh, with our work in merging with the Glens Falls Transit District. Lisa also shared with us some of the issues surrounding um, patent congestion pricing that was, has been temporarily halted by the governor. Uh, which has a funding impact on MTA, and this may have some impact on uh, the rest of the systems across the state. Uh, we also look forward to working with the new Senate Transportation Committee Chairman, Senator uh, Jeremy Cooney from Rochester, who is succeeding Tim Kennedy, who was elected to the House of Representatives in April. Uh, great way work by Lisa and her team, especially at the end of the session. We do tremendous advocacy work for CDTA. Uh, the next committee meeting, uh, well, it's scheduled for September 11th, but it could be sooner, depending on how that goes. So um, that's all I have. Any questions on that uh, report? If not, then we'll move on to Performance Monitoring Audit Committee. Denise Figueroa is sitting in today. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm sitting in for Peter Wall, who uh, did chair the committee meeting. Uh, the committee met at 10 a.m. on uh, June 20th here at 110 Waterbury Avenue and on Teams. Um, we have four consent agenda items today. The first is approval of the Gilly uh, bus purchase. As part of our annual fleet replacement program, we need to replace 20 40-foot diesel buses. We have a contract with Gilly, and the cost increase um, this time is 3.1%. Delivery is anticipated um, for summer of 2025. And uh, we need a motion to approve the purchase of 20 40-foot diesel buses from Gillig LLC of Hayward, California, for an amount not to exceed $12,664,690. Can I get a motion to buy the buses? Thank you, Jackie. Second. Dave. Uh, any, uh, any discussion about this? One priority committee happens every year, it seems, right? Cool. Every now and then we miss a year and do a catch up year, but pretty much we're, we're pretty we're pretty scheduled and focused on this. Great. Seeing uh, no other questions, all those in favor of the resolution say aye. 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 Any opposed? It's approved. Thank you. Okay. Next item is approval of the contract for fasteners. Um, we issued an invitation for bid for a firm uh, to provide fasteners, which are nuts and bolts, uh, at all of our uh, facilities. Um, six vendors downloaded the uh, uh, invitation for bid, but only one bid was received by staff. Um, uh, was received. Staff uh, conducted a poll to ensure contract uh, specifications were not too restrictive. Um, staff recommends awarding a contract to Bassanol, which is the incumbent. Uh, we need a motion to award a two-year contract for the purchase of fasteners to Bassanol of Winona, Minnesota, for an amount not to exceed $152,352. Can I get a, a motion? Can I get a motion on the nuts and bolts? Mike, second. Jackie, thank you. Nuts and bolts, kind of do that probably. <laughs> 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 uh, seeing, seeing no other comments, all those in favor of the resolution say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's approved. Okay, our next item is approval of the disadvantaged business enterprise uh, goal plan. The FTA requires grantees to have a disadvantaged business enterprise program and goal plan in accordance with DOT regulations. The program is updated every three years. DBA, uh, DBE goals are calculated by identifying procurement opportunities by business segment and se determining the number of DBEs in those segments. Uh, <coughs> staff recommends a goal of 3.7%, and uh, we will need a motion to approve the Disadvantaged Business Enterprise Goal Plan for federal fiscal years 2025 through 2027. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Denise. Second by Jackie. Thank you. This is done every three years. Any uh, comments or questions on this? Talked about it in committee. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's approved. 
Okay, and our next consent agenda item was approval of the drug and alcohol policy. We have an annual review of the drug and alcohol policy uh, that's required by the federal regulations and CBTA requirements. There was one administrative change made to the policy to include a testing site for Wines Falls. Uh, the revised policy is included in your packet. Um, and so we will need a motion to approve the 2024-2025 drug and alcohol policy. Did I get a motion on that? So moved by Mike, second by Jackie. Again, any comments, questions, annual policy? Yeah, but as Kelly explained, it's a, <clears throat> it's a very complex program that's got lots of tentacles. Mm -hmm. For example, when we expanded you know, operations to Warren County, we needed to have a test site in Warren County because all of our safety-sensitive employees, in the case of Glens Falls, basically everybody is subject to, to the drug testing program. Um, you may or may not know that you know, they're subject to random testing. So every day, you know, we pull a certain amount of numbers and uh, whoever that person is, they're going to get drug tested. And they're going to get drug tested um, at whatever hour they're working. It's not, you know, our convenience. It's set up around the schedule. So you know, they could get pulled for a drug test at 6.30 in the evening. It's it's a behind the scenes thing that is is quite fascinating, um, and then all the different substances that are in or out, um, you know, what, what what basically everything is basically in, um, and a lot of our pres you know a lot of prescription drugs are in there. So there's a lot of coordination with medical providers and you know what is you know, person A um, taking and what you know what subscribed and does that. We've had a number of times, you know, when someone's out on a medication, that's because we have to backtrack and all. So, quite the complicated program, but uh, we did a really good job with this, and Kelly has staff that, that coordinate this. Good. Anything else? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It's approved. <clears throat> Uh, next, uh, the investment committee uh, met today, um, and uh, they will provide a quarterly report to the board shortly. Um, we had uh, a couple of administrative discussion items. The first uh, is the fiscal year 2024 year-end accident report. Rich Nasso uh, gave the annual report on accidents. There were 491 accidents in fiscal year 2024, which is a slight increase from last year. Uh, there were 269 preventable and 223 non-preventable accidents. Because of an increase in service <coughs> miles, the accident rate per 100,000 miles, though, was the same as last year at 4%. Uh, the most common preventable accidents uh, occurred on property. Uh, safety initiatives for fiscal year 2025 include reducing the accident goal to 3.5%. Um, all new operators um, will begin in the STAR system. Um, and finally, uh, we'll be moving into phase three of the video mirror technology. Um, the full report is in your packets. Any questions on that for somebody else? <laughs> <laughs> All right, if none, um, we'll move on. Uh, the monthly management report, uh, Patricia Cooper provided the monthly management report for May. Uh, the MRT improved this month to $1 million. Customer fares and rail station revenue continues to be strong and uh, we're over budget by 13% and 11% respectively. Uh, there uh, may be a glitch in the wage line and we are looking into it. Workers' compensation, uh, in terms of the being over in the line. Um, workers' compensation expenses were 8% under budget for the second month in a row, and purchase transportation is 7% over budget for the month. Uh, we are in a satisfactory budget position. And if there are no questions on that, um, uh, Chris Desney provided the monthly non-financial report uh, for the month of May, uh, fixed right uh, fixed route ridership was up 17% this month. Star ridership is up 5% this month. System-wide on-time performance is at 70% and star on-time performance is at 75%. We missed a quarter of a percent of all scheduled trips and uh, preventable accidents were at 24 and non-preventable 
accidents were at 19. And that concludes the report. The committee meets, uh, next meeting is September 18th here at 110 Waterville Lee. Okay. Thank you so much, Janice, sure. for filling in. Yeah. Anybody have any questions? Most of us, I think, we're there at the, we're all the committees. Super Thursday. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we'll move on then to Community Stakeholder Relations Committee, Dave Steckrow. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Community and Stakeholder Relations Committee met on June 20th here at 110 Waterfleet Ave App and via Microsoft Teams. John Scherzer gave an update on a summer social media campaign called Explore and Win, your summer passport with CBTA. The campaign will help drive social media engagement, brand awareness, and grow our customer email contact list. The campaign will encourage the community to explore the region using CBTA's mobility options and then share their experiences on social media. The campaign details will be housed on a summer mobility landing page on cbta.org. The program will also feature an engagement campaign with the Times Union, Fly 92, and 518 Foodies. Jamie Caslow provided the Earn Media and Community Relations Report. Last month, we earned 31 placements in television, newspaper, and radio with an estimated value of $31,000. CBTA sent out nine press releases. Stories included trolley service for the Belmont Stakes Festival, construction on the Liberty Square Mobility Hub in Troy, Lake George trolley service, and outreach efforts for our TDP. We participated in community events, including transportation for United Way, United Way 518 Day, various Memorial Day parades, transportation for the Juneteenth Festival in Albany, and the Capital Region Pride Parade. We continue to see increases in followers across our social media channels. Top posts included the Liberty Square Mobility and the new transportation display at the Joseph L. Bruno Rail Station. Looking ahead, we will bring seasonal services back for the summer to Grafton Lake State Park, Saratoga Trolley, and the Schenectady Nature Bus. The next meeting of the committee will be on Thursday, September 19th at 11.15 a.m. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Dave. Any questions, comments on that? Seeing none, we'll move on to the Strategic and Operational Planning Committee. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the Strategic and Operational Planning Committee met last Thursday here at 110 Waterville Ave and via Microsoft Teams. We had two administrative discussion items, the first being the loop performance report. Mike Williams reviewed our annual uh, performance uh, report. This document includes information about the performances of routes, primarily ridership and productivity a description of recent service changes, and a look at the year ahead with options for service adjustments. It guides planning activities for the next 12 to 18 months and helps us efficiently deploy our resources. Ridership is up 20% and has exceeded pre-pandemic levels, whereas the national average is only 77% of pre-pandemic levels. And universal access is a key component of that growth. High-frequency routes, trunks, BRT, continue to be most productive. Lowest-performing routes are those that still focus on coverage versus frequency. On-demand services are modeled differently than fixed routes, so it may be difficult to compare them efficiently. On-time performance is decreasing due to driver availability and covering work manually. The purple line started out with slow growth, but has picked up significantly as expected. Warren County was added with minimal changes. We will be recalibrating run times and working with a consultant to optimize our scheduling process, making preliminary adjustments to Glens Falls routes and fine-tuning service levels on the purple line. Also, we will adjust neighborhood routes to increase the overall productivity of the system. The second item was the West facility update. Carm and Chris Desney provided an update on advancing the development of a West facility. Environmental review and preliminary appraisals are complete. Title VI analysis and review appraisals are in progress. 
The facilities department will be advancing a new lease for the current owner and the legal department will be in touch with owner representation to advance a purchase agreement. FTA has been notified of concept and will be providing con uh, guidance. The next meeting of the committee will be <coughs> September 19th, 12 p.m. here at 110 Water of the Ave and via Microsoft Teams. And that concludes my report. All right. Thank you, Mike. Anything on that? Now we'll move on to the CEO report. Thank you. Um, my report's in your packet. Um, every month I try to find an angle, something different to sort of focus on. Some months it's harder than others. So this month I was struck by our seasonal services. I think it was mentioned in just about every committee report. Um, 30 years ago, I might have had a summer route to Grafton and a summer service to Thatcher Park um, that cost a dime. Mayor Corning uh, wanted it to be affordable. Um, for people. Um, we were there until they, uh, the state came in and said, we're going to renovate the Thatcher Pool and never reopened it again. Uh, and our service uh, went away. But now you look at our summer offerings, and it's, it's, it's a full array of services and programs and, and the stuff that John talked about. It's just sort of a different approach. It really is about our brand. It really is about you know, making sure that our brand is strong. Uh, that's really a big change in the last um, 15, 20 years. We, we have now a fleet of trolleys have without doubt the largest fleet of trolleys in, in the capital region. We may have the largest fleet of trolleys in upstate New York for all I know. We should, we should fact check that. Uh, it's a popular thing that that's 48 hours fact checking. So we should fact check um, uh, trolleys. But it's impressive. And you know, for the Belmont weekend, you know, we reported in committee, you know, we started our Saratoga trolley service early and we had 5,000 rides uh, on that weekend. And a lot of those rides were just People who didn't want to, you know, want to bypass downtown, not necessarily go to downtown. But, you know, whatever the purpose was, uh, it's, it served the purpose well. Um, you know, we talked about the, the uh, Gazette building that's moving along. I know it, it may appear it's slow, but there's a number of checkpoints that we have to go through. I spoke to Mike Collada last night. Uh, he's the FTA regional administrator. I called him on a couple things. Um, they're fully supportive. Uh, they're with the program. They will help us if if we need to skip a step. I said, would you put that in writing? He said, it won't. <laughs> <laughs> but at least I heard it. At least I heard it. So um, they're, they're, they're with us, they're, and they're a, they're a strong partner. Uh, the development of the TDP and the group performance report, I'm glad to see that back. We paused that during the pandemic. But I think it's important to look at the services and see how it's doing. And there's a struggle right now. You know, the Trump routes are off the chart doing phenomenally well, BRT trunk. Uh, the neighborhood routes and feeder routes, not so much, but you know, there's a there's a coverage issue there. We, we need to be in some of those areas. And the question is, how do you do that? And how do you balance some of the um, human resource issues that we have? You know, we've been, I think we've been transparent and honest about that. We're short. Um, we're short on both sides of the house now. We're short in maintenance, we're short in transportation, and we're, we're we're struggling. Some days are better than others. Some days are not so good. The summer should be better. We've done um, a lot of adjustments. Mike Williams, Rich Cordero, and their teams have modified services to, to sort of match up with the demand. So some routes, the demand comes down because they're heavily populated with colleges and schools. So, that makes sure. so great work there. Um, really excited about the mobility hubs. These are the real hubs. Uh, Gateway Hub was, was great, it was big, it was bold, but going back to the original idea that, that Chris Desney came back with seven years ago, um, were small, small hubs built into you know, densely populated neighborhoods. And that's what you're going to see in Troy, and that's what you will see eventually in Albany over by St. Peter's. These are real small strips of land that we're going to, to upgrade. So that, that's going to be, uh, I think, exciting. Great. Um, it was great for me, one of my favorite events, to attend uh, a retiree lunch a few, few weeks ago. Uh, thanks to Pat and, and Denise for coming. Um, 
you know, about 100, close to 100 retirees, uh, all sizes, shapes, forms. Ages. Job, ages, job type, yeah, retire, young retirees, older retirees, some in great health, some in not so so good health, but but it's just great to see them. Um, I, I consider them the foundation that we build on. Um, and they, you know, it's great. Since I've been CEO, I promised them no program. Uh, there is no program. I think I spoke to them for maybe two minutes. And just let them enjoy each other's company, and they dictate you know, what the agenda is. So it's a perfect tee up, tee up for me. Um, and well, all of you, I think, looking around, I think all of you know this um, by now, but it's with a grateful heart that I tell you I'm going to retire. Um, been contemplating it for a long time. Uh, I think the time is right. Um, the authority is in really, really good shape. It's a perfect time. This is sort of like a long-distance road race. I'm going to pass the baton. Hopefully, all the person needs to do is, is just get up a little speed and take all these programs and services that we, we talk about a lot, um, take them to the next level, take them to a better level. Um, we still have so much that we can do. We have so much to offer. We have um, smart people, um, dedicated people. Um, in some areas, we don't have enough people, um, but but I'm I'm convinced <clears throat> I'm convinced that that's a solvable problem. It's, it's a societal thing and it's cyclical. And uh, I think we have a lot to offer to people um, career-wise, and we're making changes all the time. So um, I'm committed to I'm not going anywhere. Um, I'm retiring from CDTA, but I'm not retiring from the capital region. I intend to be um, active, probably more vocal in some areas uh, because I can now. Oh well, when I leave. Um, but I've committed to the board to, to staying as long as as you need me. Uh, a transition takes a while, and I want to make sure that whoever uh, occupies my seat is fully equipped with everything um, they need and anything they need uh, from me. So no set timetable, um, but I anticipate in the next several months I'm transitioning to something new and looking forward to it. But it's been an honor and a privilege uh, for me to work here. It's always been an honor and a privilege. Uh, every morning when I walk in, I have a little routine, and it includes you know, thanking someone for the honor and privilege. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Connor. We really appreciate your service. Um, this isn't really the time to start the eulogies. For oh, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, he will be around for many, many more months to come. So we want to keep uh, this st uh, ship steady and, and keep moving forward. But I do want to uh, talk a little bit about the succession planning uh, that will be moving ahead and that has started. I did form a search committee that's composed of uh, Denise, myself, Dave, and Peter Wall. Uh, we've only had two meetings, and uh, at one of those meetings, we had the opportunity to interview uh, two uh, national uh, executive search firms that are uh, involved in the public transportation industry, and we did uh, select one, uh, and they're now under contract, KL2 Connects out of North Carolina. Uh, so they're just waiting for the green light to go on so they can get started. So that should start happening uh, within another week or two. Uh, also helping us out has been uh, Lisa Morello, uh, Lou Benelli, who's been a consultant with CDTA on HR issues for a while. They've been very helpful in, in sort of trying to help us get this structured. Uh, uh, it, it certainly is a, a great opportunity for the board. This is kind of a big deal for the board to select a, a new CEO. Uh, I'm pleased that Dave and Denise and Georgie have all sort of been through this before in one form or another um, with the transitioning. Uh, and, and that'll probably be the hard part, which is for, a little further uh, down the road here. Um, I, I, the, the entire board is going to be involved in this, uh, in this process, trying to balance uh, uh, confidentiality with uh, transparency. Uh, uh, we have asked the consultant to contact every single board member, uh, so that'll be happening. We'll let you know, give you a heads up whenever that 
that's about to happen. But think about the attributes and the skill sets that, that we're looking for in, in our leader, in our C CEO, uh, communication style, leadership uh, profile. Um, collectively, we want to come up with the skill set and the attributes that we want to see in the next person. It's that these are big shoes to fill. It's going to be very hard to uh, replace Carm. You can't really replace them, um, but it's going to be a difficult job for whoever comes on. But having said that, um, you know, it's a, it's a also an opportunity for, to look strategically at where the organization is uh, and where it may, it may go. Uh, DEI is going to play a role in, this, in the selection process. Uh, there are many decisions that lie ahead for the for the board as we go we go through this. I, I, I mentioned about just trying to uh, you know look for the key parameters, uh, but we, we're going to need to deal with uh, uh, compensation packages, performance expectations for for the next person, and uh, I, I will convene the board during the next few months if we need to all get together and talk about these things. I don't really have a time frame in mind. I'm sure it's going to take several months for all this to really to really roll out. Um, uh, but but if we need to have uh, more consultation and get everyone involved with it, I will certainly do that. As Carm said, it's a good time for a transition. The organization is doing great. There's no huge projects that are on the agenda. We've just gone through a couple of, of years of them. Uh, there's no big problems, which is also great. We don't have to bring in some problem solver. CDTA is in uh, excellent, excellent condition. Um, KL2 is going to uh, start collecting uh, uh, information, resumes, uh, anyone, if you hear from anyone that's interested in the position, they just need to go to KL2 uh, Connect's website. We have a handout for the board just providing a little bit more information about the uh, succession process. Uh, they'll be going through uh, the, the reviewing all the uh, materials applications that they get. The search committee will end up uh, talking with them about some of the, uh, the, the, the best ones, I guess, that, that kind of stand out. Um, you know, they're going to be doing financial checks, background checks. We don't need any big surprises, whoever the next person might be. So, you know, it, all that takes uh, <coughs> takes some time. And, you know, we hope we have the pros uh, uh, on hand to be able to do what's what's really necessary. They've worked throughout the country. Uh, so we think they're the best firm to do, do this work uh, for us. Um, I'm sure the committee will be convening again sometime, sometime soon. Um, you know, Carmen, he's finished with telling everybody yet, since you're just telling us now. But uh, um, you know, there's more things that have to happen just to sort of get to the point to really move move through on this. Any questions about the succession planning that 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 we've started? Um, you know, eventually, when we move further down the road, we'll really be talking about a transition and how that's going to work and, 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 and take place. And again, you know, I'm so pleased that we have board members on hand who've kind of been through this. And I've never been through anything quite like this. So it'll be an experience of one that I'm um, sometimes looking forward to and sometimes not. But, you know, we'll take it as it comes. Any comments from anybody? spent the last three days, and I'm not a phone guy, the last three days on the phone, I'm trying to do here's um, two, three things. Number one, protect the company. Um, number two, um, to support our partners and friends. And number three, to just make sure that every the proper order is followed when you announce something like this. I think it's, it's work. I've, I don't know how many phone calls I've made. I've got a list you can check, maybe 100. Um, you know, protecting our political front, protecting our partnership front, and, and also, quite honestly, talking to people I care about um, that I think have been helpful to us, some of them in a small way, some of them in a big way. So the word, the word is out. Um, the word is out here. Keep getting buzzed on my phone. It's our employees, which is great. Um, and uh, we have what's the word we're supposed to use? Media people. We the word is it. out publicly. We just have right now. Okay, we leaked it to the uh, business review. <laughs> okay. Jamie, Jamie, and Emily did. <laughs> so the business review has it. Um, and it's down. Um, 
so I think I think we have done our best to 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 be to do this professionally, tastefully, um, but at the same time understanding that you know it's it's an important part of the succession process. I want the new person to get off on the right foot. Um, I'm sure some noses might be a little bit out of joint because you know they can, even I've noticed in my phone call if I say you know yeah, geez, I've been doing this for two days, I have one person say oh, it's Wait a minute, is this day two or day one? <laughs> a friend of ours, but even something as simple as that. Hey, I'm day two, not day one. I think, I think we've done a good job. A lot of work, thanks to Jamie and Emily behind the scenes, thanks to uh, Lou Lubinelli. You know, I know you all know Lou. Uh, he's, he's been a steady hand guy. And Lisa Morello is a protector. Very important at the Capitol that we do this the right way. We did. Uh, we got to the right people first, and then they did with it whatever they wanted to do with it. I don't know what they do with the information. All good. Got a few more phone calls. Well, we're off to a good start. I think so. Keep at it. If anybody hears anything, yeah. let somebody know about it. Pat, he's going to enjoy retirement, right? That's what happens. He is. Retire and <laughs> talk yesterday. It's the best thing he can do. Absolutely. Got a lot of irons in the fire. <laughs> <laughs> you got to make sure I don't overcommit. <laughs> just keep the wife working. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's going to be hard. Right? <laughs> that's that's about about two of us from experience. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that's why I'm going to play more golf. She doesn't play golf. <laughs> Anything else uh, to bring to the board today? Hearing none, I'll, uh, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Denise. Second. Thank you, Jackie. We'll see you all soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.